Hello my fellow scientists, today I'd like to talk about burn safety, so this is relevant to the lab, but also to any environment where you might be dealing with hot stuff, kitchen for instance. I was on a road trip with my wife a few weeks ago, and she got me a cup of coffee at the gas station. She said I should be careful, because it's really hot. Then she said there should be a mascot, like Smokey the Bear, but for coffee scalds. And I said, oh, like Steamy the Weasel, only you can prevent coffee crotch. Put a lid on it. And thanks to Connor McPhee for helping me make this. His freelancer link is in the description. Now, I don't want to make light of burns or burn safety or safety in general. These are all really important things to bear in mind. So I'm showing here a Celsius and Fahrenheit temperature scale. Celsius makes sense. It's what science in the world uses for everything. Zero is freezing, 100 is boiling, and a hot shower is about halfway up the scale. Fahrenheit is garbage. 32 is freezing, 212 is boiling, and the only good thing you can say about it is that a hot day and a cold day are about 100 degrees apart. Going on Celsius then, above 48 degrees presents a potential scald hazard. 48 is where the maximal temperature for installed water heaters is set. Above that, you start to get risky, and the higher you go, the greater the risk, the faster a scald can occur. Hot coffee is usually served at about 160 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, but different places serve coffee at different temperatures. This is also one of the reasons why it's important to wear a lab coat in the lab. If you get hot liquid on your clothes, you now have hot liquid stuck next to your body until you take your clothes off. With a lab coat, that's easy. It's designed to be removed rapidly. You can even tear the buttons off if you need to. And that puts the hot liquid away from your body. It's one more layer that can be easily discarded to get something hazardous away from you. So in my experience, the most common lab accidents are scalds and minor cuts. Same as in any environment, same as in a kitchen. It's easy to accidentally mishandle something hot or something sharp. In the lab, this is a little bit more hazardous because the sharp things could carry contamination and the hot things can be a lot harder in the lab than they could be in a kitchen in general where you're mostly working with water. It's really easy to misjudge how hot something is in the American Chemical Society safety manual for educational institutions, there's a great line that says a hot ceramic plate looks exactly the same as a cool ceramic plate. So when you're dealing with a, say, hot plate, there's no way to tell if it's hot or not unless it has a label on it or a blinking light or some other way to identify it as hazardous that the user has applied. So wearing the right clothes, using the right protective equipment, especially goggles in the lab, will generally suffice to prevent these sorts of things, but labeling and being aware of uh, heat hazards is, of course, really important. So just remember Steamy the Weasel. Only you can prevent scalds. So special thanks to Connor McPhee, who helped me make that little comic. I thought it turned out quite well. He did a great job on that weasel. And if you like that kind of thing, do tune in uh, next week. We will talk about science and the literature and results from our lab right here in the Allen Lab.